You know, at the beginning, you you said you know the crisis, and I you know even for some viewer, maybe some of our newer viewers, some imagine the crisis to be you know COVID, right? That's the crisis. Isn't that the crisis? That's why we have to lock down. There's a, there's this massive crisis. Yeah. Well, it was. Re <laughs> yes, I understand that some people think this is the very first pathogen that the world has ever experienced. <laughs> but, you know, I've, one of the things that I've, I've done since this whole thing began is read on the history of, of pathogenic uh, diseases, infectious diseases, and and um, and the way we responded to them. In the old days, the Middle Ages, people thought that they were a miasma that you had to run away from, and that. What that did is it created a kind of a caste system, a feudalistic system, or a class system, which the upper classes that could move away and get away from the pathogen uh, just forced it on everybody else who couldn't afford it. So we, we developed these sort of divisions in society. Um, but as modernity um, progressed from the late Middle Ages onward, after the end of the Black Death, and, and the idea of modernity and progress began to dawn on people, we began to develop a different attitude towards infectious diseases. Uh, that was, we, we need freedom, we need rights, we need equality, and we need progress despite the existence of pathogens. We're going to forever do a deadly dance with these things, uh, and we always have, but the, the burden of that, of that deadly dance should be community-wide. It should be shared within the social structure. By, by everyone, uh, as a community, we need to come to terms with these things. We're not going to divide society anymore into these subgroups. And in the 20th century, we, we got especially good at this, right? So we've, we've we had uh, disease outbreaks in the United States in, in 68 and 69, and 57 and 58. We had a polio problem in the early 40s. We had uh, 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 a parrot flu in 1929, and so on it goes. But gradually, over the 20th century, we learned more about infectious diseases. We discovered the idea of herd immunity, very interesting discovery. And we learned that the, the way to deal with disease was not just, on one hand, dividing society according to the exposed and the unexposed, the clean and the unclean. We, we, didn't, we didn't do that in the 20th century. Something went wrong in 2020 where we, we, we took a completely different uh, path. Um, and it was even more extreme than just going medieval. It, it was, it was a very strange, you know, sort of scientific experiment that's been conducted on almost the whole of humanity. Nothing like this has ever been tried before. They treated us like lab rats. We were, our job from the middle of March onward was to behave as um, just parts in a, in a, in a machine, like um, part of a computer model. You know, they, they modeled us and told us what to do. And to me, it's all summed up in, in Deborah Birx's comment at the March 16th press conference from the White House in which she said, uh, what we want is for everyone to stay separate from each other. That was her statement. And this is coming from the White House. And people didn't think that was unusual. I mean, not in the whole history of humanity have we faced an order that everyone should stay separate from everyone else. I mean, this is a wild new experiment in, in social management uh, under the guise of disease mitigation, under the guise of virus control. And it didn't work. There's no evidence that it achieved anything in terms of mitigating uh, the out bad outcomes from the disease. So the experiment failed, and we, we haven't, <laughs> there's been very little public recognition of this. this is, we, we're, we've been slow to admit it. Uh, very few of the architects of this of this thing have ever well none of them I don't think have come forward and said okay that was a that was a huge mistake so we're left now with this tremendous carnage and it's hard to know what the worst part of it is it's I guess for me uh, the the worst carnage is the demoralization that comes about from the realization that your rights and freedom can be taken away in an instant and there's nothing you can do about it the courts are not there for you. Uh, Public health officials are cheering this on. Uh, you, you feel unempowered. I think this is why there's so much depression and, and drug uh, overdoses and alcohol abuse and the rise of obesity and ill health everywhere. Just the sudden realization that you are not free, that your rights are not guaranteed, that all the things you used to believe in uh, may not be true anymore. That's a shock. The sudden transformation of the liturgy of life into a completely new uh, regime, 
uh, and to a new protocol uh, that you have to, you know, to which you must comply, whether it's masking or distancing or how many people you can have in your home, whether you can even go to church, you know, and you, you go to a party and everybody calls you a, a super spreader. This is weird. This is a new world for us. And we have to ask ourselves, were the world willing to put up with this? Was this a good idea? And if not, what are we going to do about it in the future? So there is a crisis, and the crisis exists on many levels, uh, social, cultural, medical. But I think above all else, it's intellectual. We have to rethink or think again about what kind of people we want to be, what kind of society we want to live in, and what are the rules under which we're going to live. Is it about the clean and unclean, the essential and unessential, elected, unelected, or beginning to recapture those values of democracy and equality and liberty that really did build modernity. That, I think, is what we're dealing with right now. It's that fundamental. That fundamental. Many of us, our whole lives, have thought about issues of economics and politics and philosophy and so on. They were parlor games for us in the past. You know, there were debates we had with our friends, uh, books we read, tests we take, um, things we talked about over cocktails. All of that is now real. It's the world in which we live right now. Everything we've ever worried about, every, all these issues that have, have consumed me and, and you and many people, we're now, this is it. This is our moment. We have to act on our beliefs, which means we have to decide what it is we believe. And that, that is really fundamental, I think, right now. It's fascinating. And I think, you know, the, what, as you're speaking, I mean, I... I I, I, I hear everything you're saying. Part of me mm -hmm. doesn't want to believe it. Yeah, I know. I know, but... And, and, and I, but I, I think a significant portion of society absolutely doesn't and might not even understand what you're saying here. I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe if you lived in South Dakota. You know, they never shut down, really. Or yeah. Sweden or something like that. You might think, well, life's normal. Uh, but here's the problem. Uh, there are some places that, are, that opened up sooner than others, and they feel normal. I think Florida feels that way right now. But the effects of the lockdowns, with the supply chain breakages and, and the chip shortages and the inflation that we're facing, uh, the debt crisis, this is going to affect everybody. All of it reminds me of a, a statement written, I think, in 1923 by Ludwig von Mises. And it, I would think about this all the time because he says, because I've read it so many times in the past, but he says, when civilization is sweeping towards destruction, there is no safe space for everyone. Therefore, it is the obligation for, of everyone to throw himself into the intellectual struggle for freedom. This was 1923. When I, when I read that, I thought, that's a little bit over the top. Civilization sweeping to destruction? Come on, that's not really going to happen. Well, he was right. His world, Vienna, fell apart, right? It got consumed. He had to leave in 1934. That was a calamity. He was right. He was right. And of course, we read about these things. We always think they're in the past. It's not going to happen to us. We've learned. We've learned from the past. We, we don't do that kind of thing anymore. We're above that. We're beyond that. The terrible thing uh, that we've discovered uh, in the last 20 months is that we are not beyond that. We are capable of that and worse. Different, but potentially worse. Thank you.